Pokemon has been around for over 10 years and is known to be a lighthearted kids game. But there's always been something unsettling about the original versions. Something that struck a nerve with gamers. And that is Lavender Town. In 1996, Pokemon was developed by Game Freak. In the game, you must collect, trade, and battle creatures while attempting to become a Pokemon Master. On your journey, you go from town to town collecting badges by winning a battle in a Pokemon Gym. So that's how it works. In each town, there's a gem, except one, entitled Lavender Town. After getting through the rock tunnel, you head down Route 10 to what is entitled the Noble Town. At first it may not look like much, but inside is what could be considered the darkest part of the Pokemon universe. In the northeastern corner of the town, you find the Pokemon Tower, which you find out is a cemetery for Pokemon. This is a big shock for kids because to this point they believe Pokemon don't die, but faint. To top it all off, there's a side plot of Team Rocket killing a Marowak and its baby Cubone grieving the loss of its mother. When you make your way up the Pokemon Tower, you encounter what they call Ghost, which turns out to be the dead Marowak. You can't catch it but just defeat it, and then it disappears. This is a very depressing plot considering young children are the main demographic, but this is just the beginning of the problems. The only thing about Lavender Town that people talk about more than the plotline is the eerie yet calming music that plays. This can be proven since the YouTube video for this song has over 1.3 million views, which is more than twice the amount of any other song from the game. The comments are filled with people saying that it scared them as a kid and still does now, but it gets weirder. Apparently in the first copies of the game in Japan, there was a high pitched noise in the song that only children and young teenagers could hear. This allegedly caused kids to get headaches and some claim even suicide. There are not many copies of the original soundtrack that exist, but I managed to track down a first edition ROM of the game, so let's listen. Okay, so since you heard the rumor, let me go over the facts. The truth is that no kid has ever died from the song. I searched the internet for a newspaper article or even the slightest amount of documentation and couldn't find anything. As for the headaches, that's another story. It's very plausible that a kid could have symptoms from listening to the music, but for this to happen, the child must be listening to the game through headphones to pick up on the high frequencies, have very good hearing, and are sensitive to high-pitched sounds. Add the fact that a relatively small amount of these cartridges were ever made shows that only a handful of kids could have had these problems, but it was enough for Nintendo to edit the music. Now some people may not agree with the necessary headphones, but I believe this because, well, the Game Boy speakers were not that great. Anyway, I still find it very odd that somebody thought it was a good idea to place this noise in the music in the first place. Overall, this has been over-exaggerated through the years, which was probably caused by people finding the music unsettling as a child, and that was probably caused by a sort of attachment to the game. This is how the myth goes. In the original Pokemon Red and Blue, when you encounter your rival in Lavender Town, he asks you whether or not you know what it's like to have one of your Pokemon die. At this point in the game, he no longer has his Raticate that he used in previous battles. Your previous battle before this took place aboard the SSN. Your rival's Raticate sustained serious injuries from the battle, but because of crowding and confusion on the luxury liner, he was unable to make it to the Pokemon Center in time, and the Raticate passed away. This has been spread around the internet quite a bit in the past few years, so let me go over what I found. 
Although quite amusing fan fiction, no one from Game Freak or Nintendo has ever admitted to this story. To top it off, there's a hole in the theory because all his other Pokemon fainted, yet Raticate's the only one that dies. Missing No is a glitch in the original Pokemon games where you can get a glitched Pokemon by talking to the old man that teaches you how to catch Pokemon, then flying directly to Cinnabar Island, swimming up and down the eastern coast until you find it. For years now, people knew why it occurred. But the real mystery is what this missing note is. The general consensus is that the original Red and Blue games intended for Marowak to evolve into Kangaskhan. However, last minute changes decided that this would not be the case, and that Kangaskhan would only be a Pokemon without evolution. But to take the time to delete the correct code from the game would prove troubling and time consuming. So the programmers just moved the code to an empty spot without a number, or missing no. There is also a variation of this story that involves Cubones having a split evolution between Marowak and Kangaskhan. Now that you heard the theory, let me show you my findings. Although this sounded crazy at first, believe it or not, there's some truth to it, but I have my own version. There are a lot of games that glitch the same way as Missing No. For example, in Smash Bros. Melee, you can play as a Master Hand without hacking the game. There is a way of getting around choosing a character, so what does the game do? It chooses the first character in the memory, which just so happens to be the Master Hand. So what does this have to do with Pokemon? Well, when you trick the game with the missing no glitch, it chooses the first Pokemon in the memory, Pokemon 000 or missing number. This Pokemon 000 just so happens to evolve into Kangaskhan, but that's a standalone Pokemon, so how could something evolve into it? Well, this means at some point there was a de-evolved form of Kangaskhan. What we can't prove is that Cubone at some point was meant to be a baby Kangaskhan, but what I'm certain isn't true is that at some point Cubone had a split evolution between Marowak and Kangaskhan, because there was no such thing as split evolutions in Generation 1. The closest thing to it was Eevees, but I don't feel that they should count. Knowing this makes me believe this answer is not possible. So in my books, it either comes down to Kangaskhan being part of the Cubone family, or there was a completely different Pokemon. You decide. This theory doesn't pertain to the official Pokemon universe, but a rumored hack game. This is how the story goes. There is a hacked version of Pokemon Red known as Creepy Black. In the game, you play as a ghost found in the Pokemon Tower, which is not catchable in the real game. Whenever you battle a trainer with the ghost, they are defenseless against it, and if you battle them a second time, one of their Pokemon are missing, implying it died. After a certain point in the game, you lose all your Pokemon and all the people disappear and in their place are tombstones. The story continues after this, but you get the idea. Now let's see if there's any truth to it. It's so convenient that at the end of the story, the guy says he lost the game. To top it off, no one else has ever found a copy and displayed it online. Although I have found claims the game is on a 101 cartridge, there's no proof of that either. So the fact is, there's only a 0.1% chance that the game's real. But if you still want to play Creepy Black, you can, because people have attempted to make recreations of it that you can download online. After Pokemon became a hit, they were coming out with Silver and Gold version, which had a recreation of the Kanto region that you could play after completing the game. The problem comes into place when you reach Lavender Town and you find out it's been completely altered. In place of the Pokemon Tower is a radio tower, and the music is not eerie anymore. This makes people believe that Nintendo knows they messed up by making a town all about death, so they changed it. But my views are a little different. I would have believed this theory to be the case prior to 2004 when Leaf Green and Fire Red came out in Japan. These were remakes of the first generation titles and guess what, Lavender Town was back to normal. But this was not the end of things, when Heart Gold and Soul Silver were released for the Nintendo DS, the radio tower was back. So what happened? Nintendo has never addressed the issue, but this is what I assume. I think that without the side story of Cubone's mother and Gold and Silver, the Pokemon Tower was worthless to have. 
so they decided to convert it to something that would make more sense. Well, that's everything you'll ever have to know about Lavender Town. Even though a lot of it's not based on anything factual, it's still weird how there's so much talk over a small town in a Game Boy game. I believe this is caused by the fact that people want to make more of something than it actually is just because it was traumatizing to them as a child. So, thanks for watching, and this has been a Glip Boy production.